Hi, so I'm sure people of my age recognise this. It's an overhead projector. Now, it's slightly different in that the, the light isn't underneath a box here, it's actually in the head here. And we used to use these a lot in school and for presentations, turn on the light, stick a piece of plastic on there with some writing on it, and we could project that onto a wall or a screen. It sort of died out with the advent of things like document cameras, where you have a lit screen, a video camera, and a separate projector now projects that image. But these were tremendously popular in schools and universities until about oof, 10, 20 years ago. Now I was given this one because it's broken and I've actually fixed it and I did that on the stream and if we turn that light on it's quite a powerful halogen light that's shining down onto a mirrored surface. Your plastic goes on there and instead of having light under the bottom we've got the light on the top. Now, although I like this as a curiosity, it is a curiosity and you have to think what can you do with a thing like this and that's what I want to explore in this video because this of course is not a modern invention as, not, as document cameras really aren't. The concept of it was to project something so that an audience could appreciate, it, what, what, appreciate what you were uh, projecting. There's two ways that these things work. This particular thing, the light shines through it when you can shine light through something, it, just in the same way as film, it's called uh, dioscopic. And these things were called dioscopes. If you shine a light on something and it can't shine through, it's opaque to light and it gets reflected, then it's supposed to be episcopic, and these things are episcopes. So a dioscope is where light is shined through, an episcope is where light is bounced off. A dia episcope is where it can do either, and this would function as a dia episcope. It means we have the mirrored surface, and yet if we put an opaque object on there, like a mineral sample or leaves or something like that, it could still pick that image up, translate it through the lens and shine it onto the wall with this reflective mirror right here and a focusing right, a focusing ring right there. And that's how these things worked. Now, they are um, accredited to the famous mathematician Euler, and he certainly used one in uh, 1756, actually. So it's been around for an awful long time. They sort of died out, as I said, with OHPs and document cameras, but they were very popular in the 1950s as a children's toy. So you could get a postcard or an image from a magazine, project that image, and then you could trace around that image. So you still find these things uh, being sold as what are called tracing projectors. But they're all opaque projectors, and they're either dioscope, episcope, or epidioscope type. So what I thought I would do with this is uh, basically change it into an episcope. Now we don't need much for an episcope actually, we just need an image, a flat surface, some way of generating light and the optics. So on for this, all we need is this section here. If we took that section there and popped it on top of an enclosed box and inside the enclosed box was white, pop that on an image, we have ourselves an episcope. Now these days of course, we tend not to use these halogen lamps. And in some of these things, these lamps can be a hundred pounds or so. These particular ones, just check sure it's not too hot, is that ends about two to three pounds. But they are dying out, it's a filament type lamp, and they do get very hot and they do turn to burn out quickly. And of course we have no shortage of incredibly bright luminous sources with things like this, which is an LED work lamp of 700 lumens, and then we have this torch here, which is, I think, 1300 lumens. So we have no shortage of ways of generating intense light with LEDs that we can shine onto an object. So all we really need to do is take this apart, modify it for the LED light, build a box, and we'll have our self an episcope. So let me take this apart first. Okay, so I've disassembled the whole thing and cleaned what needed to be cleaned. Now remember, this is the section we're interested in. And this was where the original lamp went, and here's the lens focusing system. Now that original lamp when the, went on this beautiful bullseye lens. So the lamp was about here, and then behind it, we had this lift up reflector, which dropped on there. You lit the lamp, the reflector and the lens sent the light through downwards, spread it out. Now we need to retain those bits, of course, so we can retain those and we can retain this, but we don't need to put the lamp in because what I've done is I've taken apart that uh, LED floodlight. Here it is. There's actually surprisingly little to these things. There's the LED unit itself. It's on a reflector with a little bit of thermal paste, so we can just pluck that off. There we go. And that's all there is to it. Bit of electronics, the lamp itself. So what the plan is, is to 
put this onto here so that when we put that back in it'll be above the bullseye and that will act as our light source. So I need to remove that reflector, screw that on there and then I can use the original fittings to put everything back. Okay, it's really simple actually. The lighting board, the original one from the lamp is right there. There's a little chock block there to hold it. The cable comes out. The lamp itself has been fitted back here. There it is, just on there where the original reflector went. So the whole thing shuts up like it should do. There we go. Now we can put the covers on and plug it in. Okay, so now we've finished the optics, what we really need to do is put it in a box so we can shine that light in a box. And I was thinking about making a box on all the materials I might use, wood, timber, plastic, whatever. And all of that you could certainly do, and I was in my local store and I saw this. It's a plastic bin. This plastic bin cost me 40 pence, and I thought, well, that will do it, all for the want of walking down to Asda's and spending 40p, so why not, it'll speed the whole thing up. So I got this plastic bin, and it's about 30 by 30 by 30, so it's about a 30 centimeter cube. Now, the original optic sat 32.5 centimeters uh, from the baseline, so we should be able to focus it. If we can't focus it, we might have to add a couple of centimeters onto the bottom, and I'll use builder's board or something like that for it. But we'll give it a go, and we'll see if it'll actually focus at this 30 by 30. If not, we can add a couple of centimeters. Now, the bin, obviously, is a bin, so it came with handles. And I thought, well, that's going to let a lot, of, a lot of light escape. And the problem with the light escaping is it lights up the area around you, and so the image isn't so easy to see. So you want to contain as much of the light as you can. So I needed something to block that off, really. And I have these. These are a whole lot of uh, 600 lumen floodlights. I've got four of them. And I thought, well, what the hey? You can't have too much light, can you? So I drew around them, and I cut that out, and I put these into there. And there's one that I've actually done so there it is it's fitted to the side there and I'm going to do that on all four sides this is just a standard bit of UK electrics where I've taken the wire into the electrics so that I can run the wire around and it's going to get a kind of sort of a, I don't know dalek look about it I suppose but I'm going to run that round through some plastic conduit and then we're going to put the optics on top and run the cable from the optics into here and then a switch on there so it gets a switch all gets wired in and those little holes that were once in here are now gone. So my job really is just to cut these out and I'm doing that with my trusty multi-tool because it goes through this stuff like you wouldn't believe. So I'm going to cut these out and fit these lights. So that's it with the containment in place, and this one's the only one that differs. Here we've got one going to the light, this one will go to the plug-in, there'll be a switch on the front here, and this one will go to the upper station. So on the upper station, I've got two holes I need, one for the lens and one for the light. And I'm going to put the lens in the centre, I've got a hole saw the right size, and I just have to drill that out. that on that's actually the build done now all we've got to do is wire it all together now I've obviously used house lights here is house lights house boxes house conduit so all of this stuff is actually going to be okay and we can use house wiring and what I've got here is some twin core on earth this is 1.5 mil which is four lighting circuits and that's exactly what that is it's a lighting circuit we just run the wires clip all the neutrals together all the negatives together and here's where we're going to put the switch now we're going to we are not going to double pole switch it we're only going to switch the live. So all those neutrals collect together. The live goes in one end of the switch and the out live goes in the other end of the switch. Then when we're ready, we can turn this on. So let's get some wiring done. Wiring this kind of stuff is actually really quite easy. All you're doing is collecting the colours and you can see it here. Now I've kind of run a ring and you can see that these thicker wires are the 1.5 mil and we have a live in, a live out and it's just part of the ring. We've broken that ring and connected it to the live here on the light and doing exactly the same with the neutral. So you collect all the browns, collect all the blues, screw them all together in a terminal block and that's all there is to it. People get a bit confused when it comes to switching. That one we can now stuff in there and put a cover plate on it. On the switching, it tends to be a little more complicated just because there's more wires. I've done exactly the same thing. I've collected all the earths, because remember we earthed this. I've collected all the neutrals, there they are, all in that little bundle there. 
and then all of the lives with the exception of the live in, which is right there. So this wire comes in here and I've left it there. All of the other lives I've collected together and I've given another wire because these two go to the switch. And this is what I mean by breaking the live. So when we switch that on, because it, these lives aren't connected until the switch is turned on, all of the lights will turn on. Now I can do it individually. If I take this one here and that live in, live out, and I put a break between here and those two, then it would have switched each light individually. So really, you collect the colours with the exception of the live. With the live, you collect all the lives that supply your um, lights, and the live in, which is your um, men's supply, you leave to one side. You put the switch between those two, nothing else to it. So there you go, one homemade episcope. Now I've got it on this box that says Crazy Circuits, and we're going to try and flash that onto the wall. Okay, that was a bit of fun, hey? It's made from a bit of old H OHP, an upside down bin and some floodlights, and it performs really quite well. Now you find these sold, they're sold as Tracer projectors, uh, and you can still buy them today. Is what you do, obviously, is cast a picture, and then you can trace around that picture for things like murals or, or whatever you want to do. But, dead easy to make if you happen to come across one of these. But I thought I'd show you how to go through that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.